Hello and welcome everybody, all of my internet friends out there. Thank you for watching another video. Uh, again, I appreciate it. You guys are the best. Not a ton of hard hitting news today. Interesting news, uh, definitely something you're gonna wanna tune in for. I'm gonna put all the super important stuff up front, I promise, and then some more interesting, just cool kind of fun stuff towards the end. I got three things to talk about today. So first off is order news. So. There's been a little bit of news thanks to Long MacArthur Ford did a live stream yesterday or the day before, uh, shined a little light on how they're going to do the ordering process that I found interesting that we should tap into. So we're going to talk about that first. Second, there is news on pricing plans that they're going to do for the, oh, for the Ford Lightning. Duh, that's what we're talking about. I should have led with that, but I'm sure it was in the thumbnail, so you didn't need me to say that. Anyway, there's stuff on the pricing plans that we should talk about. It's interesting. It's interesting. So we'll get to that. And then finally, something that's really cool that launched this week is Ford's new E-Crate motor that you can buy for under four grand and build your own EV. You could go ahead right now and build your own Ford Lightning or whatever you wanted before the Ford Lightning came out. That is what they just released, which is just crazy. It's super cool. Um, we're going to look at that and then, yeah. That's what we have planned today. Let's get into it. So first things first, last, my last video, I talked about how Ford is going to do the Ford Lightning ordering in waves, right? So while we still don't have a date from Ford, I know, right? It sucks, but we, and it sucks because we just don't know when we get to order this car, right? So it should happen hopefully within the next month tops. That's, you know, fingers crossed. If it's, if it's like past December, like 15th, I'm just going to be like, what? Uh, so it's got to be any minute now. Anyway, what they're going to do is waves. And, and the interesting thing about this is I was wondering if they're going to, you know, like skip certain dealerships if they only have people who are like, like 50,000, 60,000, like some late reservation holders, like if that's all the dealership got, does that mean they're going to get skipped? And no, that is not the case. So the way that it was informed to me is that they're going to actually allow dealers to uh, create their own list and they'll have a small segment of their reservation holder list that they're allowed to edit to decide who comes in first. So there could be some actually shady stuff going on there, which is kind of, you know, ugh, I don't know if I love that. But at the same time, I see why they do it. If the dealer knows that like someone they've talked to is very interested in buying it, they're a little bit later on the list, they can, they can you know, preference that person, give them preferential treatment. They can get more conversion numbers. They can sell to the people who they know who are going to make the order. So I see the logic behind it, but it can also, you know, be shady. If everyone's interested, everyone kind of deserves like an equal thing. So what does that mean dealer to dealer? Uh, apparently, even if you have like a later reservation, if you're in like the top 10, top four, whatever it might be of your dealer, you will still be able to, you know, get in that first wave. So if I'm a hundred thousand, let's say I ordered today even, and my local dealer has no reservations, I'd still be one of the first people to make an order, which is crazy. And if you were on the first day, and everyone in your town ordered on that first day, then you might not be in the first wave. So it's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. And you could complain about it, you, but I'm, I've learned to just let these things go. I actually think this will help me. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Probably not. But you never know. So that's the latest news on that. And it is important to know, like, you know, people are like, oh, man, I need to scramble. I need to find a new dealer who only has, you know, two reservations or something. Well, keep in mind, if you do that and you find like someone like in the boonies who has no reservations, please know that their allotment might only be one truck like you you still have a better chance if you go to a bigger dealership. I made a whole video about how Ford chooses allotment. There's a million different things and and it changes too. So it's just like a based on past things like with the Bronco and with like Maki and how they've done allotment with those. So I've laid that out before. Uh, I guess I'll give you an abridged version right now, but it has to do with competition in the area. 
So if like there's six other dealerships all within the same block, that's going to pad the allotment a little bit. It's going to say like for trucks instance, for instance, if they've sold a ton and ton of trucks, then they're going to that's going to pad it cuz they know it's a good truck area. Um then there's like past sales of uh you know, like if the Maki their conversion rate was like 80%, 80% of the people who revert, reserved it ended up buying. That's something else that can happen ha- that blah, blah, <laughs> that can help the allotment. Now there's a ton of other things too. Uh that's just a quick, you know, off the top of my head. But Keep those things in mind if you're thinking of leaving. So that's that. I wish there was more news. I really do. But that's all we got this week. So, um, you know, stay tuned. That's all I got to say. Okay, so up next, uh, this is a quick one. I think it's probably not a huge surprise, especially with hearing about, like, you know, supply constraints. They're not going to be doing X plan pricing. Now, all of the others apparently are still in effect, like employee, um, but X plan is the friends and family. That's the one that I would have been eligible for, which kind of sucks because I have some friends who work at Ford. Um, I can't, I, there's no discounts for that on the Lightning. So I don't know who that pertains to. I think the discount, even on other cars, is like not a lot. So it's not like a huge blow. I mean, it would have been nice to get some sort of discount or whatever. But hey, uh, you know, when you buy a car, a brand new car in this economy, too, like you're, first of all, don't expect a deal. <laughs> Hopefully you've learned that. And then, second of all, if you get it at MSRP, consider that a win. I know I prefaced that at the beginning that there was more to that, but as I'm, you know, talking about it, it's like, no, it just kind of makes sense. So let's skip ahead to what's actually exciting, the e-crate. So what you're looking at now is, in fact, not a F100 from 1978. This is actually the new electric pickup truck kind of concept idea from Ford. And now what they did is they released this new E-Crate motor. Now, it is only $4,000 for this motor, a little bit under that, four thousand or 3900 now that is just a motor. Keep in mind, you you will have to buy battery cells, the actual inverter, uh, power controls, you name it. This is just a motor, and they're not selling those yet. And honestly, coming across those is probably pretty challenging unless you are in this space and you do this as like you know you have access to batteries right now, which is again is a challenge that even Ford and Tesla is having. So, uh, you know, it's not like every Joe Schmo can go out and buy this thing. But, you know, if you know the right people, you could probably make this happen. Now, the one that we're looking at here is based off of the Mach-E, actually. So this is built on their uh, the base of the Mach-E, the skateboard platform, and it has an 88-kilowatt battery system. And just look at how sick this thing looks. I'm obsessed with it. Like, if I were... I would honestly consider driving this like it's such I know it's like all PR here and it is they're doing a great job. This thing is all over. But what's cool about it is that they took, you know, the the most opposite of an EV and turned it into an EV. And, And it's just cool to see stuff like that. I think you don't get to see that a lot. And what I absolutely love about this is the, you know, innovative things that are going to come from this like uh, there's so many cool like you know garage builders who are making some cool stuff so this truck actually uses two motors rated at 280 horsepower each giving it uh okay so it's got 480 horsepower and 634 pound feet of torque this thing can rip that thing is so cool and the motors weigh about 220 pounds, which is pretty interesting. And the truck uh, actually rips. <laughs> the only downside to this is that you couldn't buy this if you wanted to. You have to be a skilled, uh, you have to be an engineer, basically, <laughs> to throw this together. Because, again, you got to source all of the stuff, like batteries and, you know, everything needed to make this happen. I hope that doesn't lead to some dangerous projects, actually, now that I think of it. People just, like, linking, like, 60 car batteries in a base or something, and I don't know. I know that probably wouldn't work, but anyway, that's that crate motor, and it's just cool because we are at, and I keep talking about this, but we're at, like, the pivotal time right now. This new EV tax credit's pushing us 
it's going to be that push that gets so many more EVs on the on the on the road. And you know, it might diminish Tesla a little bit. I feel like they're going to be uh not such like a crazy thing to see Tesla's driving around anymore, which is cool. And I don't know, at the same time, this is a little selfish of me and totally the opposite of, you know, the opposite point of everything, but like I'm almost sad that they're becoming so popular because now that I'm getting one, it's like when everyone else is getting one. So it's not like I'm, uh, you know, an early adopter anymore. I guess anyone buying a car now is still pretty much an early adopter because there are dinosaurs who just don't get it still. And yeah, you're probably commenting on my video right now and it's okay. You know, whatever helps you sleep at night, bud. But it's time to just, you know, embrace the future and let cool things happen it's so like, yes, it's like cool for like society and the environment, and all that, but it's also fun. These things are fun. They're like just as much a guilty pleasure as they are, you know, helping the world in a lot of ways. Uh, on that note, if you are someone who still thinks like EVs are the devil or whatever, please go watch Engineering Explained break down the carbon emissions of building a EV versus a actual uh, ice car. And he does such a good job. And like because people say, like, what about lithium mining? What about all this? And then, uh, it, yes, it does technically like when you count the batteries take a lot more carbon to create uh, sorry, to create electric cars. And they, it's like they read that headline and stopped reading. But what they don't read is like in most states, like depending on what your energy source is, you can have that like in, in like two years or sometimes less, it, it, it immediately blows the other car out of the water. So, and when you think about like the lifetime of an EV, which is at the minimum of like 10 years, I think batteries are set to last, yeah, it, it's obviously better, but it is also interesting. Some There's one case, I think it's West Virginia and maybe one or two other states where they use coal power. And if they're using that to power their cars and, and power like to charge their cars, it actually it makes less sense and actually hurts the environment a little bit if you buy an electric car in those states. So if you're if you're a warrior in West Virginia, then you're allowed to make these stupid comments. <laughs> but anywhere else... No, it's pretty good. And and what's interesting, too, is that hybrids actually really are all around better, mostly, uh, which is just interesting. Uh, I don't know. At this point, again, I'm rambling. But hey, you're still here for whatever reason. And I thank you for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wish I had more like, you know, hot scoops in this video, um, but I don't. But like I said, I'm a hawk on this stuff. I'm going to be on it. I promise. If there's hot news the next day, I'll have something for you. So uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Again, 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 you guys rule. Um, this turned into like one random video I made and it just got a little, like, I don't know, a thousand views or something. And then I got so addicted to making these. Like it's so, this is fun for me. So I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> That's the end of the video. That's all I got.